Hey guys, how you doing? So in this video, 50 and broke, what can you do for retirement? So I'm going to give you the bullet points here, the quick version. If you follow these steps, you'll see yourself in a much better position financially, even just a year from now. So uh, even six months from now. So number one, if you're 50 and broke, chances are you have to control your spending. You have to get the spending under control. I know it's not very exciting, but really, you got to start looking at your spending with a fine tooth comb in terms of your eating out, your car expenses, your vacation expenses, so on and so forth. If you are 50 and broke, you have to go into emergency mode, you know, three, three, uh, three alarm fire. You know, this is not a five alarm fire, but it's a three alarm fire. And here's the good news. If you follow these steps, as I said, within six months, you can find yourself in a much better position. When you see yourself going in a proper direction, when you see your uh, financial security getting better over time, it changes your whole psychology. You feel much better about yourself, even if you're still in the hole, right? You want to just get the direction in the right direction, right? That's the key. You want to get that direction, meaning you want to get the debts lower, lowering, and you want to get the savings increasing and the investments increasing. So number one, it's a psychological issue. You're going to have to start working on your psychology. You're going to have to change your association in your brain to spending. You have to start associating painful uh, feelings with spending money. You have to change that. You've got to change spending money. That may, uh, you have to change the positive association you probably have now with spending money. So when you buy something, here's the trick. Think of you buy something, I don't know, a coffee. Uh, you buy a new new shirt. It's something you don't you know. Just something you don't really need. If you have a closet full of shirts and clothes, you don't need to buy a new shirt, right? Um, so what you got to do is you got to uh, start changing the associations you have in your brain. This is what's going to affect your behavior medium long term. Willpower doesn't work. You have to change the way your brain uh, processes information. So when you buy something. Let's say next time you go to Starbucks and you buy a $7 latte or whatever it is, you guys, you buy it, and as you're buying it, you got to associate it with some of the worst memories you've ever had in your life. Pick something like somebody's funeral or uh, when you got super sick. you got to start creating those links in your brain. you got to start creating those negative associations with purchasing things. If you buy a piece of a new TV, a car, you got to start making negative associations. That's the first trick. You got to start with the little things like the coffee you buy or a shirt you buy or a new pair of shoes you don't really need. That's number one. Number two is going to freak you out. If you have a bunch of clothes in your closet that you don't use, you haven't used for a year, bring them to the goodwill. Start associating good feelings with giving away stuff. That's another thing you got to do, right? So it's interesting, right? When you hear... Uh, these financial videos they always talk about like the the numbers and the the money aspect of it which i'm going to get to like the strategies that you need to take but they don't consider the psychology the psychology should be first and foremost that's why i concentrate on that so by giving away stuff you're going to be creating nice positive associations with giving to people and then when you see you have less stuff in your closet and you got just the, the, the two three shirts that you need the two three pairs of pants that you need you know what i mean um, what happens, it's going to start feeling good to have less. When you have a nice, simple, elegant closet, I'm just using this as an example, it just feels good, right? It's like having a fridge that's not packed full of food where you're going to have to throw it half of it because it gets rotten. You just want what you need for that week. That's it, right? These are the things you have to do. These are two main strategies that are going to help you, psychologically speaking, in terms of changing your financial fortunes around, whether you're 40, 50, or even 20 years old. Earlier you start, the better. So if you're watching this and you're 25, or you're 18, or you're 30, the earlier you start this process, the better. Most people who get rich, get rich because they spend less, much less than they make, right? So that's number one. You gotta start changing all those associations with purchasing stuff. You wanna make that, ugh, make you cringe. And what you wanna do is you wanna start attaching good associations with giving away and having less. Trust me, when you have less, you just feel good. When you give stuff away to people, you just feel good. 
I started doing that years and years ago, and trust me, it's like, you know, it's natural. Humans tend to accumulate stuff. So every year I have a ritual spring cleaning, and I give away tons of stuff, or I sell tons of stuff. And when my closets are empty, I feel quite good. Now, if you start trying to fill them up again, that's not a good thing. You don't want to fill them up again, right? <laughs> you want to keep them empty. You got to think of, of things that you buy, right? Clothes, cameras, whatever it is, TVs, video games. You got to think of it like fat on your body. When you lose weight, you feel good, right? You feel good. You, you lose weight, you're, sh you're svelte, you're in good shape, you're nimble. That's how you are going to be financially as well. You want to lose weight financially, meaning you want to get rid of the excess spending, excess stuff. Associate negatively with owning a bunch of stuff. Trust me, when you own a bunch of stuff, I've been there, um, it, it starts becoming a burden. What's that old Buddha's expression? In time, that which you own will come to own you. So don't be, be owned by material things. So that's number one. Number two, the psychology. Number two, this, again, it's going to freak you out, health, right? You can't make money, you can't be productive if you're in bad health. So you've got to get the health in order. What's the number one thing you can do to get in, uh, healthier? Um, eat healthy food. Natural, unprocessed food. Vegetables, uh, meats, different types of meat, healthy food. Even if you cut out 50% of the junk food, you're going to feel better. You're going to have more energy. You're going to be cognitively superior. So going along with eating healthy is you also want to drink a good amount of water. A lot of us don't drink enough water. I'm guilty of that. I have to work on it. It's just creating a habit of drinking enough water to flush out your system. Trust me, you start drinking enough water every day, you can look it up online what the actual amount is. I'm 6'2". For me, it has to be 3 liters. Um, that's like 12 cups a day. Um, when you drink that amount of water, you just feel much better. You feel much cleaner. You think better. You're, 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 you feel better in your skin. So that's number two. Number three, you got to exercise. Just walking. Walk for an hour a day. Do some weights. I'll stop there, but get healthy is key to financial success. That's just the reality situation. You're sick, you can't work well, you can't think optimally, and in the States you can get these major medical bills. So remember this, 80% of the reason people go to the hospital is due to metabolic disorder, due to improper lifestyle. Not eating good food, Eating bad food is actually a big part of it. Get rid of sugars and carbs and processed foods. You'll feel much better. No, no Coca-Cola and soda. Fruit juice is full of sugar. No fruit juice. Very little sugar. Very little carbs. No processed foods. Natural foods. Um, you'll be in much better shape. So that's going to help you earn as well. Okay, next. Let's get to some of the financial things. So we're spending less. So next thing you got to do, you got to get rid of your debts. All your debt. So you start with the high interest debts. Those are the credit cards, probably. So if you have a credit card where you're paying 20% interest, another credit card you're paying 15% interest, you pay off the credit card at 20%. That's number one. You also want to do is you want to transfer high interest balances to low interest balances. You, you may be able to go to a bank and say, listen, I want to pay off this credit card. I owe 5,000 or I owe 10,000. Give me a line of credit. And they may give you a line of credit where you're paying half the interest or even it's 4% less interest. Then you pay off the balance of the credit card, and then you rip up that credit card. Credit card should only be used as a, a tool to purchase, but never carry balances on a credit card. Meaning, if you buy something for 500 bucks, you have to have on the credit card, because it's just convenient. You have to have that $500 in the bank. If you don't, you're not buying it. All right, so that's, that's, not, that's the next thing. You get rid of all your high interest debt, you gotta start paying that down. The next thing. FU money. You need a lot of FU money. FU money is your emergency money. I would say minimum three to six months so you don't have to worry about the next paycheck. All right? So FU money. Uh, next thing, you want to increase your skills. Why do you want to increase your skills? You want to increase your skills so you make more money. That's it. Making more money. You've got to make more money to offset. So that's the next thing. Again, this is just uh, an overview, right? I don't want this video to go on for two hours. Uh, the next thing is you have to start saving for retirement like a mad person. Once you get all these things in order, and you can get these things in order going pretty quickly, then you start saving. Now they say, they, the financial advisors say, well, you got to save 10% a year or 15% of your salary per year so you can retire comfortably. But you're, you're old, so you got to do a lot more saving. So what I discovered in my late 20s, 
is that when I started making a lot more money, I paid off my debt, I got rid of my credit card, and uh, then I started making a lot more money because I was a developer. Um, I, instead of increasing my lifestyle to match the extra money I was making, I would just save like crazy. So instead of saving 10, 15% a year, I was saving 50% a year, 60% a year. In some years I would save 80%. Why? Because I was staying at the same lifestyle I was before, but I was making all of this extra money. I didn't buy, go out there and buy Porsches and, uh, and buy uh, super expensive condos. I just stayed living in a very frugal lifestyle for several years, well, just a few years. So when you're saving 50% a year, you know, as opposed to 10% a year like the, the normal person, in two years, you save 10 years worth of the normal person. Think about it. In two years, I saved what a normal person would take 10 years to do, right? I'm saving 50. They're only saving 10 per year. Imagine if you start saving, you know, 60, 70, 80. See how quickly you can be saving so much more money than the next person. So that's the next strategy. But people are saying to me now, well, how do I save all this extra money? Again, you got to cut your expenses, get rid of the debt, especially the high interest debt. And you got to increase your skills so that you can raise your salary or maybe do more overtime work. Once you get your mindset changed, you get your psychology changed, and you see your debts are going down, and you see your, your, your savings are going up, it's going to be all this positive feedback. You're going to feel good about yourself at a very core emotional level. Fantastic. When you start um, eating good food, and you start drinking enough water, and you exercise, and you sleep well, all these things come together. So when you see people talking about personal finances and you know, retirement and so forth, if they don't include the psychology and they don't include the diet and nutrition, they're missing out important, an important component of all this. You know, I can tell you, you know, it, you can have all the money in the world, you can you have millions in the bank, but if you're sick, it's not fun, right? And if you're sick and you can only, and you're working at only 70% efficiency in terms of your energy and your brain function, you're not going to make nearly as much money. So even if you don't care about your health for some crazy reason, understand that ill health will, de will affect your ability to make cash. So I'll stop here because this is going on for quite a bit, long video. Point is, follow these steps. Within months, you're going to see your, you start feeling much better about your financial situation, amongst other things. If you like this video, let me know. Give me a thumbs up, comment below, and I can go into detail about each of these sections. I know there's a lot here to unpack. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is everything I teach, by the way, is based from personal experience and my experience helping and mentoring other people uh, into a real good situation. Follow this advice, you super thumbs up. I figured a lot of this stuff out in my late 20s, uh, so I wish I would have been told this stuff more forcefully in my teens. So if you know uh, younger people and you want to help them out, give them this video. This is the blueprint for a nice, comfortable, and fun life, you know? So yeah, if you're 50 and older, you know, and you're worried about your retirement, I just gave you the blueprint. Remember I just said, if you set all this in motion, within just two, three years, you can find yourself in a situation where the typical person would take 15, 20 years to get to. So you can catch up. You can catch up, especially when you improve that health so you know, you're a strong, vital 50, 60-year-old, right? That's key. Anyway, hope that helps. And don't discount the psychology of this. It's very important. All right, I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in all kinds of different things. This is my small channel, by the way. My big channel is on coding. I decided to create this channel because I didn't want to mix up the health and the finance with the coding. But anyway... If you're interested in learning how to code, uh, software development, uh, freelancing, you can check out my other channel as well. All right. Cheers, guys.